I read a tweet recently that said that you should focus on building out things like the main menu, the save system, the settings, the audio settings, uh, the colorblind settings, and things like that as a priority when building indie games. So that caused me to take a look at this block breaker game and decide that I'm not really happy with the way that it looks. So today we're going to take a small step forward and I'm going to change the font to something that I like better. Now the UI in this game is built using Kayak UI. Kayak UI has a new release out, 0.2. We've been using 0.1, as we can see in the cargo toml here. And there are some interesting new font APIs for loading in and generating MSDF fonts. An MSDF font is a font defined by a signed distance field. Right now I'm using Roboto because that's what they had in the repo when I started this project. And I didn't feel like choosing a different font. The signed distance fields use the R, G, and B channels of color to define different places for each character. So if you look around this image, you can start to see like, here's a copyright symbol, here's a Z, there's an S and a T and a U, and so on and so forth. The reasons for using these are we get pretty high quality font rendering. We don't need to have a new font asset for each font size. So behaviorally, it's a little bit more like having vector images. So there are two ways to get a font into Kayak to be used for rendering inside of our game. The one we're using right now is kind of the optimization approach, I'll call it. In both situations, we have to generate that MSDF font file. In the first example, the only thing we have to do is set up this JSON file that points to a TTF font file with an appropriate character range. Then Kayak, when our program boots up, will take care of processing that into an MSDF font file. It will cache it and write that file back out, which is nice, and probably the approach I'm gonna take today. But of course, the other approach is that you can pre-generate all of this and skip that load in entirely. So let's bump up to 0.2 and try to run the application and hope it succeeds. And it does look like we have a couple of UI issues to fix before we can get into doing fonts. So it looks like one of the things that we have to do is pass the kayak root context into the UI camera bundle. So let's go into the UI file and we have our kayak root context here. So let me drop that above the UI camera bundle and pass the widget context in there. It looks like the resource trait is no longer derived for kayak root context, which is interesting. So that's something we'll have to go to the docs to figure out. And then of course the RSX return looks like it changed as well. So in the example, they're doing the UI bundle, the UI camera bundle with the widget context now at the bottom of the startup function that they have. So I'm not sure if that's critical or not. I guess we'll find out. It does look like we no longer need to insert this resource. So maybe we will save that and we'll grab our UI camera bundle and we'll just drop it in the same place that they're using it. Of course, we need to put a semicolon on our RSX now. RSX, of course, is just code generation. We could write that manually. And the other thing I wanna look at is what happens when we build components or widgets as they're called. So it looks like these component functions or widget functions now return true. It looks like we're already doing that, but I wasn't including the semicolon on the end of the RSX. And that does seem to be the issue. Wasn't able to find render update systems for widget kayak app. Interesting, an error I've never seen before. So we're using kayak app bundle and they are using Kayak app bundle. We're adding kayak, or they're adding kayak context and kayak widgets as plugins, which I think we're also doing. Kayak context, kayak widgets. We've got the parent ID and the widget context. Not being able to find the render update systems for kayak app feels like I did a setup problem wrong. So I went into the history and I'm just looking through commits that look interesting, that look like they are things that might affect uh, the behavior of our program. This is the semicolon change for RSX. So this is a PR with a bunch of basically added semicolons. It looks like a grid layout feature got added, which is sweet. A bunch of font uh, rendering improvements. There is a main menu example. Maybe we go look at that. Examples, main menu, menu button render, startup. That's what we probably care about. Okay, kayak root context, the kayak widgets context plugin. Do we add that? Just the kayak context plugin. Okay, interesting. So maybe the book hasn't been updated yet for the current release. So there's the Kayak Context plugin, which is not warning me about as far as I can tell. And then there's the Kayak Widgets Context plugin, 
I don't know if this is supposed to be all three of them or the use item brings in the kayak UI prelude widgets star as well as star. So let's go look at ours prelude widget star and star. That's what we have. Yet we don't have this. So that's not a plugin on Bevy then. Oh, that's a widget context plugin. Okay. So interesting. We've got the ability to add plugins to the widgets now. I wonder if that's going to be something that we use in the future to do like other widget libraries and stuff. Okay. So we're good now. I think anyway, <laughs> if we hit new game, it starts. If we hit exit, it closes. Perfect. Wonderful. So we're good. It's just adding that extra kayak widgets context plugin. So it's time to get our new font. I'm going to go for alpha slab one, which is the same font used for the headings on the rust page itself. This is a font that I use in a bunch of my video thumbnails and things like that. Anytime I put titles up on the screen, it's usually alpha slab one if I'm doing rust content. So it looks like we get regular 400 and that's the only version of it that exists. So we can download the family and we end up with a little zip file here and we get alpha slab one regular TTF. I'll copy both of these files because I know OFL is the license, which is the open font license. I'll copy both of these files and I'm gonna drop them into assets in a fonts folder right here. So we get alpha slab one dot, uh, regular dot TTF, which I'm going to copy so that I have the name. We of course want to make it back to the book. The book tells us what kind of JSON file to create. So this is going to be font name dot KTTF. So inside of fonts here, I'll do uh, the font name dot KTTF, copy the JSON format and replace this with the right name. And hopefully this will work. I'm going to keep the old one around for a second. And in the meantime, I'm going to do fonts alpha slab one regular dot KTTF. And hopefully that just works. I'm expecting it to take an extra second to generate the files. Asset path not found assets alpha slab one regular. Okay. So the name of the font file needs to be from the root of the assets directory. So it'll be fonts slash. Okay. So the font loads in, it took a second to load. Maybe I'll include that in the video. Maybe I won't. But let's see what happens if I rerun this again. The font is just there. Okay, so that's wonderful. Love that. We have some positioning issues because, you know, it's a new font. But I'm much happier with this font being in the game. I like it a lot more than Roboto. And if we look at the cached font file that got generated, it's an SDF with the RGB. I can hopefully zoom in far enough for you to see these letters. <laughs> and now uh, it looks like it stores each individual letter, letter uh, like, individually. So... I'm not sure. It looks like they might be a little bit too tall, but I don't know. Maybe there's something I can do in the generation, but that's it. So we now have our font. We have it generating from a TTF file that we got from Google Fonts. It's displaying inside of Kayak. I've got some positioning issues to deal with here, which may or may not be related to the, what looks like a double size height in the actual PNG file. Right, this is alpha slab one regular dot KTTF dash cached dot PNG. So that's what it's reading in when the uh, whenever the game starts up again. And we would just commit that in, I'm assuming. If we look at the text, we can set the size and the alignment. If we go to the kayak UI docs, we look at text props. This looks like it has the content, the font, the line height is interesting, the size and a couple of other things. We're using alignment to center. Word wrap is really nice to see. So the size of the font is 28. And I misapplied the value in pixels for the line height, or it needs to be sum. Oh, this is just going to be a sum number. Interesting. I wonder how they're choosing to apply that number. It's a zero uh, element or a zero, whatever you want to call it, number in CSS as well. So in that sense, let's see what we do with like 0.5. And that doesn't do have the effect that I want it to have. So I have some debugging to do, but we do have the font in game that I'm pretty happy with. And we can now move forward with making maybe a little bit of a nicer UI here. So that's where I'll leave it for the video for today. We were able to get rid of Roboto in our UI. We got Alpha Slab 1, represent in Rust, and we'll continue to make this main menu look a little nicer. <laughs> Have a great rest of your day.